Well, hello there. My name is Shannon Keen. Yes, it's pronounced Keen, and I am a senior cloud advocate on the enterprise platforms and tools team at Microsoft. I'm here today to talk through the next evolution of the Azure VMware Solution, or AVS for short, as part of the 2020 festive tech calendar. I wanted to extend a kind thanks to both Gregor and Richard for the opportunity to participate this year, and I hope you find this session informative. For additional content as time unfolds, please feel free to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn as ABS continues to gain popularity with our customer base. Also, the aka.ms link will take you to our brand new documentation. At the present time, AVS version 2.0 is GA and deployable in East US, West US, West Europe, and Australia East. Let's first start out by introducing the service. Azure VMware Solution delivers a comprehensive VMware environment as a service, which allows customers to run native VMware workloads on Azure. Customers can now migrate VMs directly from on-premises into Azure, landing on bare metal, purpose-built, hyper-converged dedicated nodes to run your VMware VMs in Azure exactly as they run today in the hypervisor you both know and love, VMware. Customers can now seamlessly run, manage, and secure applications across VMware environments in Microsoft Azure with a common operating framework. Customers will be able to capitalize on their existing VMware investments, skills, and tools, including VMware vSphere, vSAN, and vCenter, while leveraging the scale, performance, and innovation of Azure. Let's step through the new and differentiated features because we did have a version 1.0 of AVS. AVS version 2.0 is a first-party Azure service cloud certified by VMware. Then there's the seamless Azure experience and native integration that should hopefully shed light where everything you need to configure happens in the same Azure portal you would use for any other Azure service like a VM, a web app, or a load balancer. Companies can make use of the Azure hybrid use benefit for licensing with Windows and SQL Server, which reduces the overall costs. Then if you're still running Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2 or SQL Server 2008 or 2008 R2, you are eligible for the no-cost extended security updates in Azure using AVS. Patching your environment becomes more cost-effective by migrating these VMs into Azure using AVS. If there are issues with your AVS environment and you need to escalate with support, you only have to call Microsoft. Microsoft will coordinate with VMware to resolve any issues you may face within your AVS environment. The AVS environment supports the latest VMware technology updates, so this will help you continue to move the mark forward and ensure the software you're using is supported within the lifecycle management ecosystem of both Microsoft and VMware. Hybrid Cloud Exchange Enterprise is also available. HCX is how it's sometimes abbreviated. This will help you migrate those VMs between on-premises and Azure using vMotion. Our AVS nodes are fast and highly performant using a hyper-converged infrastructure. There's also a concept of a unified licensing model and consumption breakout using AVS and Azure. This makes that cost optimization you need to run each month a little easier, since it's only really one place you need to go for detailed breakouts. There's also a simplified NSX interface using AVS version 2.0 as well. As of right now, these are the different software and hardware specifications for AVS. These specifications will evolve and change as time marches forward. Billing uses an hourly pay-as-you-go model, and you could even consider using reserved instances, either the one-year or the three-year. The service requires a minimum of three AV36 nodes, and you can add single nodes as required. These are the common use cases or scenarios we tend to see with AVS. First, there's the data center expansion, reduction, or retirement. You can gain additional capacity when you reach the limits of your existing data center thresholds. It's also easy for you to add additional capacity in the cloud and eliminate any headaches of managing hardware refreshes. Customers can reduce the risk and cost of cloud migrations by using ABS compared to the sometimes time-consuming conversions or re-architecture. Plus, you're using familiar VMware tools and skills to accelerate those cloud migrations, which ultimately helps. In the cloud, customers can make full use of Azure services to modernize applications at a pace that's right for your company. From there, 
We'll also see disaster recovery and business continuity. Customers can think about leaning on AVS to establish remote access to data and apps in Azure. With high bandwidth connections using ExpressRoute, you can quickly recover from incidents. Low latency networks provide fast response times that users tend to expect with business applications. Using ABS, it's easy to replicate all VMs, all policies, and networking using those familiar VMware tools. The ease of recovery and replication greatly reduces the risk and effort of creating and managing DR implementations. Then there's the speed and simplification of migration. You don't need to convert these VMs to IaaS or PaaS and can quickly migrate the VMs to Azure using vMotion with HCX as a fairly straightforward migration pattern. Then there's the application modernization. So even though AVS is a lift and shift model, you can make use of Azure Active Directory, you can make use of advanced analytics, or even AI to start moving toward application modernization of your VMware stack. So I now want to take some time and talk through the deployment steps involved with building the solution in Azure. These are the high level steps you take when you deploy a software defined data center or SDDC in Azure. You'll first deploy the private cloud service using AVS. From there, you'll create a virtualized network or a VNet for the environment. Afterward, you'll create an Azure Bastion host for access to the AVS environment from on-premises. You'll then create a gateway subnet in the VNet. You'll deploy a VNet gateway, and then you'll provide an auth key to connect your on-premises environment into Azure using ExpressRoute. Finally, you'll connect your ExpressRoute to the VNet gateway. Seems pretty straightforward, right? Then, when you connect the VMware environment on-premises and the AVS environment together, these are the steps you'll follow. You will want to connect to the Azure Bastion host you created during the provisioning of the AVS service. You will then connect to vCenter once you've connected to the Bastion host. From there, you'll connect to NSXT Manager, and then you'll enable Global Reach for on-premises access. Finally, you'll configure the on-premises environment with VMware Identity Manager, which is the Identify as a Service offering from VMware that provides single sign-on capabilities and user-based controls within a vSphere environment. Of course, I'm oversimplifying this process a bit as each step is a bit more involved, but the concepts are straightforward enough to understand from a customer's point of view. There are configuration changes you need to make in Azure, and then configuration changes you need to make on-premises in order to build a truly hybrid solution that extends your VMware footprint into Azure. So let's step through the network architecture as it'll become one of the most important topics to uncover related to your deployment. Network interconnectivity between your Azure VMware solution private cloud and on-premises environments or virtual networks in Azure enables you to access and use your private cloud. There are two types of AVS private cloud interconnectivity. There's the basic interconnectivity, which enables you to manage and use your private cloud with only a single virtual network in Azure, and then the full on-premises to private cloud interconnectivity, which extends the virtual network connectivity to also include interconnectivity between on-premises environments and AVS private clouds. At a high level, this is the quick overview of networking related to AVS. One thing to note is all AVS deployments come with an express route circuit. The way in which you route network traffic into and out of the software defined data center or SDDC is completely up to you and the networking pattern you're looking to adopt. AVS private clouds require a minimum of a slash 22 CIDR network address block for subnets. Note you can carve this up if it makes sense related to the way that you provision subnets. This network topology should complement your on-premises network. In order to connect the on-premises environments and virtual networks in Azure, the recommended pattern is to make sure there are no overlapping network address blocks. There is a caveat, we'll talk about that later in the session. The diagram displayed here showcases basic interconnectivity. This implementation is best suited for AVS evaluations or implementations that don't require network access from on-premises environments. 
Think of this as maybe the starter version of interconnectivity and network access. There's logical express route based networking between a virtual network in Azure and a private cloud, which is shown here. The interconnectivity fulfills three of the primary use cases, inbound access to vCenter and the NSXT manager that is accessible from VMs in your Azure subscription and then not from the on-premises systems. Additionally, this also provides outbound access from VMs to Azure services, as well as inbound access and consumption of workloads running in a private cloud. To establish full interconnectivity to a private cloud from on-premises, you need to enable ExpressRoute global reach between a private cloud ExpressRoute circuit and an on-premises ExpressRoute circuit. An on-premises to Azure ExpressRoute circuit is required to connect from on-premises environments to your AVS private cloud in Azure. This ExpressRoute sits in your subscription and isn't part of the AVS private cloud deployment. The on-premises express route circuit is beyond the scope of this conversation, but know that if you require on-premises connectivity to your private cloud, you can use an existing express route circuit or purchase a new one within the Azure portal. Once you've linked the express route circuit with global reach, the two express route circuits will route network traffic between your on-premises environments and your private cloud. To enable full connectivity, an authorization key and private peering ID for global reach can be requested within the Azure portal. To enable full connectivity, an authorization key and private peering ID for global reach can be requested in the Azure portal. You use the key and ID to establish global reach between an express route circuit in your subscription and the express route circuit for your new private cloud. The routing requirements of the solution require you to plan private cloud network address spaces so that you avoid overlaps with other virtual networks and on-premises networks. This implementation enables you to use the following use cases, hot and cold cross-center vMotion and on-premises to AVS cloud management access. AVS supports a VPN connectivity pattern for POC deployments or any deployment where you just need site-to-site -site connectivity. It can take customers some time to plot out network connectivity, or maybe the customer provided express route isn't part of the mix yet from a telco vendor in order to establish that hybrid private connectivity. In the interim, we provide a way for customers to onboard AVS and test migration patterns. At the present time, VMware has not backed an SLA related to migration over a site-to-site -site VPN, which is why the recommended production deployment surrounds express route and HCX Enterprise. Similar to other migration efforts, companies need to assess their VMware environment using something like Azure Migrate or Sizer. From there, customers will have a better understanding of the workloads they intend to migrate. The migration approach can be done as a live migration, a bulk migration, or a cold migration using HCX Enterprise. Plotting everything out in this manner means customers have more time to identify all steps for workloads to reach full production. Of course, customers will want to go through several tests and final validation. You will want to feel confident the solution is viable for your company. You'll create a private cloud. You'll move a few VMs using the preferred migration type and hopefully encounter no issues as you will have worked closely with Microsoft throughout this period. Once the POC is over, then it's the transition to production phase where you perform an at-scale migration and adoption of the AVS platform. Of course, customers will want to go through several tests and final validation. You will want to feel confident the solution is viable for your company. You'll create a private cloud, you'll move a few VMs using the preferred migration type, and hopefully encounter no issues as you will have worked with Microsoft very closely throughout this time period. Once the POC is over, then it's the transition to production phase where you perform an at-scale migration and adoption of the AVS platform. We offer up Microsoft FastTrack as an option if you need help scaling the deployment or you can seek help from certified partners in Microsoft's partner ecosystem as well. Azure Migrate now supports assessments for the Azure VMware solution, providing even more options for customers to plan their migration path into Azure.
Previously, Azure Migrate Tooling provided support for migrating Windows and Linux servers to Azure Virtual Machines living in an IaaS world. Newer features include database migrations, web application migrations, virtual desktop scenarios, and Azure VMware Solution. Customers can now use the same migration hub to assess machines for migrating to AVS as well. Using the Azure Migrate Server Assessment tool, customers can analyze readiness, Azure suitability, cost planning, performance-based right sizing, and application dependencies for migrating to AVS. The AVS assessment feature is currently available in public preview. The solution supports up to 35,000 VMware servers in one Azure Migrate project. Hybrid Cloud Exchange, or HCX, becomes the tool to lean on here related to migrations. HCX enables migration of your VMware workloads to the cloud or other connected sites through various built-in HCX-supported migration types. HCX can support large-scale bulk migrations of VMs as well. HCX also supports any vSphere to vSphere migration pattern, which adds extra functionality. It's not just a migration pattern into Azure. It's really sort of the Swiss army knife of the VMware environment related to migrations. HCX can be part of a site pairing in DR, which means high availability will follow your app around regardless of any disasters, user errors, or equipment failure. HCX offers parallel VM migration threads, which helps speed up the process and helps it feel less single-threaded in terms of a migration pattern. HCX does not require an IP address change, and there's no NAT involved either, so this really starts to become an easy conversation with customers that need their IP addresses to never change. I know we had spoken earlier on in this session that the IP addresses should never overlap. The only caveat is here. HCX Enterprise allows you to extend Layer 2 networking so both environments have the same IP address. If this is a want on the part of your company, you'll need to factor this deployment into the overall approach of moving your VMs out of your on-premises data center. In order to set this up, global reach should be configured between on-premises and the Azure VMware Solution SDDC Express Route circuits. All required ports should be open between on-premises and the Azure VMware Solution SDDC. You'll need one IP address for the HCX Manager on-premises and a minimum of two IP addresses for the Interconnect and Network Extension Appliance. The on-premises HCX Interconnect and Network Extension Appliances should be able to reach vCenter and the ESXi infrastructure in Azure. To deploy the WAN Interconnect Appliance, in addition to the slash 22 CIDR network address block used for the SDDC deployment in the Azure portal, HCX requires a slash 29 block. You should factor this into the overall network planning. Let's move into the demo to show how easy it is to get started with AVS in Azure and showcase some of the interesting configurations plus integrations we've accounted for within the AVS resource. In this demo, I'll walk you through what it's like being an admin for Contoso Health Services. They are a longtime VMware shop that provides billing and other patient services to doctors around the globe. They're looking to Azure to help expand and modernize. I'll show you how easy it is to get started creating your first private cloud, how you can use the existing VMware tools that you know and love to manage your private clouds in Azure, and how to take full advantage of key capabilities in Azure, like the Global Footprint or the AZ CLI. So you'll go through, you'll select the actual resource you're looking to create. You will provide a resource group or create a brand new one. You will name the AVS resource. You will select the SKU. You will provide the vCenter admin password. You will confirm that admin password. Then you'll provide the NSXT manager password. You'll confirm that password. You'll need to specify the address block and tie it to a virtual network. You'll hit Review and Create. Once the validation passes, you'll click Create. A little time has passed, so you can see the Azure VMware solution showing up here. By clicking on there, you can kind of tour the private cloud and you can manage the capabilities. 
You can take a look at how many hosts there are. Go in here to identity, clusters, connectivity, you can go look at the metrics. Let's go into connectivity. You can configure the vMotion network express route. This is where everything is handled. You can go here to configure the HCX environment. This is where you configure express route global reach. This is the add-on here. So if you had Site Recovery Manager, you could actually plug your key in here. And then the cool part is going into the Bastion host. So you'll connect, provide the username and password. And then you're inside the environment, and it looks like VMware. So here's your vSphere environment, just like it is on premises. Let's take a look at the storage. You see the vSAN data store showing up there. This is the networking, all the different network segments that have been configured. Here's the NSX manager. This is what it looks like. It's just like it looks on premises. This is where HCX is configured right now in the environment. Let's take a look at the content libraries. Notice how the content library is sitting in Azure Blob Storage, which is pretty cool. And then when you flip over to the Azure portal and you go into that storage account, and you click on the containers, you'll see this, the content library showing up and everything shows up in there like it did inside the vSphere environment in AVS. So let's say you wanted to think about increasing the hosts. You could go into your AVS private cloud. You could click on the hosts itself. Go into the clusters. Click on the ellipses. And adjust that way. Or you could think about leaning on the AZ CLI as well. There are a number of VMware commands that will help related to administration. So this is a sample way of updating the node count, the specified way to make this work in terms of the AZCLI commands. You'll wait a little bit here. You'll see it showing as running. And it's been updated. You'll get the JSON output. When you go in here, you see that the host count is now four. So let's flip back here to the dashboard. So we've covered how to set up the AVS private cloud instance. We've taken a look at the way that vSphere shows up, how you can augment what you're already doing by leaning on something like Azure Blob Storage, and then how to automate some of the tasks like increasing the node count from three to four with the AZ CLI commands. And with that, this concludes my session for today. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks Gregor and Richard for the opportunity. And please reach out if you have any questions about Azure VMware Solution.